Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by Composer X, it would have to be work P. Well, Composer X is Josef Suk, the fabulous Czech composer and son-in-law of Antonin Dvorak and the grandfather of the great Czech violinist of the, violinist, pardon me, of the same name, Josef Suk. He was a wonderful composer. He didn't write a ton of music, and his life was rather tragic, and he was a very experiential type. That is, he was a, a classic late romantic guy who expressed all of his suffering and grief and misery in music. Why did he have suffering and grief? Well, essentially what happened was he married Dvorak's daughter, and then within a very short period of time, both Dvorak, who he loved dearly as his father-in-law, and his wife passed away. And he expressed his grief in a number of works, some really, really beautiful works. There's the piano cycle called About Mother, um, which memorializes his wife. And there's also the Azrael Symphony. Mm, Azrael is the angel of death. It's a wonderful work powerful, intense work that exercises the grief that he felt over these terrible personal losses. But that is not the work that I have chosen. The work that I choose is the one that came immediately after Azrael, um, and it became part of a sort of a tetralogy of big symphonic poems. It's a summer tale. Then after a summer tale came Ripening, and then a piece called Epilogue, which was his last major work. These are huge, complex, very complex, late romantic uh, exordia, uh, effusions of, of music, based, of course, because he was a Czech composer, on you know Czech melodies, Czech sounding Slavic music, not necessarily folk music, but just that melos is very, very present in his music. But but it gets increasingly refined and buried in the contrapuntal extravagance of some of these works. Um, they don't get played very often because they're quite difficult um, to perform, and they all end quietly. Oh, all of them end quietly. There are no triumphant endings, and so nobody wants to do them. They're kind of like big Strauss tone poems going to Czechoslovakia, but they are gorgeous. Oh, they're so beautiful. And A Summer Tale, I think, is the most beautiful of them all. I've, I've quoted A Summer Tale, um, or I've used it in one of my, uh, you know, world's most beautiful melodies series, the finale. Oh my God, which is called Night. Do, 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 do. Ya, da, 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 I mean, it's beyond beautiful. Really, really, really gorgeous. But the whole piece is wonderful. It's in five movements, and, and the movements have titles. You know, they're like little short ones, and then there's, you know, there's a beginning movement, and then there's like, let's see, what do you get? You get like noon, which also has a wonderful tune. Do, 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 do. It's such a wonderful portrait of stillness. And then we've got in summer heat. And then there are blind fiddlers, which actually begins as a duet on the English horns. Um, another with harp, you know, strumming in the background. I mean, these are, you know, nature and life evocations. They're, they're very powerful and very beautiful. Then there's like possessed by phantoms. Woo! That's sort of like the Rondo burlesque of Mahler's Ninth. Something like that, you know, it's one of these bitter, sardonic, you know, malevolent pieces. And then finally, night, where, as in the Azrael Symphony, peace envelops all. And it's just so marvelous, especially the very end. The very end, where you're, you you could just imagine yourself walking out in the evening, looking up at the stars. You see the, the infinite cosmos receding in the distance. I mean, it's so poetic. The imagery is so graphic. It's an absolutely fabulous work. And it sounds like nobody else. Sook had a real personal style, a personal melodic style, a little bit uh, elusive, not quite as distinctive as his, his father-in-law's, but then again, who was. Um, and he wrote quite a bit of beautiful music. You know, there's the fantastic scherzo, which is a great piece. The early symphony in, in, in E, which is very, very lovely. Sounds sort of like 
Dvorak a little later, and uh, quite a bit of other stuff. But I think that the uh, A Summer Tale just summarizes his entire aesthetic and that the god Cancrazans, first of all, is going to love the piece and he's going to love it so much that he's not going to want to eliminate all of classical music, but for one work per composer. That's the idea of this series, of course, to persuade him otherwise. And this will get the job done, I'm sure. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.